Good afternoon, everyone. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. Happy Tuesday. Happy beginning of the week. We've got 2017 Bowman's Best Baseball going on. It's an eight box pick your team rig number 15 from jazbeeshobbyland.com, where we broadcast live from coast to coast and all around the world. All right, there it is. The 23rd, eight box PYT number 15. Our Arthur wants Arthur's been searching for a Goldschmidt for for ages. Bruce is here. He got last spot mojo. He's looking for a Helio. They're the big giant prospect. That they managed not not to give up for all of the pieces that they got. Eventually, we're going to give all these posters away. I have a stack of them next to me. All right, folks. So, now the Goldschmidt that Arthur is looking for, that might that's, might be a little tough, Arthur. There's only like one or two vet autos per case. These are, these are mostly, uh, mostly prospects, of course. That's where this. That's where this is great. See you, boss man. Congrats to your Eagles. Are you? Are you? Oh, shoot. whoa! This is this is a revenge game, right? This is against the cheaters. Against the cheat. Against the cheat triads. Yeah. This is a this is a revenge game. Eagles by seventeen. Wow, boss man, with the early prediction. Early prediction. Yeah. Uh, for the next two weeks, it's going to be a lot of Eagles talk, folks. Bossman and Nick Jaspi are both big Eagles fans, so you're going you're to be hearing a lot about a lot about the Eagles this week, ladies and gentlemen. So just be prepared for that. Um, I'm pulling up the uh, Baseball America Top 100, which I believe they just released a couple days ago. A lot of these prospects, a lot of these guys, you're going to see in these sets right here. Um, Bruce was talking about how uh, Helio Ramos is already on the top 100. Uh, he's number 79. Top 100 prospects. I think the Dodgers have four players there. I think the highest is Walker Bueller. And then the next one is Ver Alex Verdugo, who both of them should be... Uh, competing for roster spots, opening day roster spots this year, and possibly, and we'll probably, you know, if all goes right, be regulars in a, this year, later at some point this year, maybe next year, who knows. Yeah, then the next one down is Kybert Ruiz, who I didn't realize. Hey, do you have him at Tulsa, TJ? I didn't realize how young he was. I think he's only just turning 19 this year or 20 this year, maybe. Something like that. Really young. But, um, but yeah, Dodgers have a couple amazing catching prospects coming up the ranks, too. He might be ready, like, by 2019. Maybe even a cup of coffee this year. Yeah, Ronald Acuna for the, uh, for the Braves is number one on that list. Otani is two, Vlad Guerrero Jr., Eloy Jimenez, and Victor Robles are your top five. There's Justice Sheffield. Is he on this list? I don't know if he is, but I know he's a... Uh... He is. Justice Sheffield is number 41 on this list. This autograph going to the Yankees. His brother Jordan in the Dodgers organization. This one goes to Daniel Patera and the Yankees. Aaron Judge. We'll set those aside too. And we'll randomize these guys left and right, by the way. D.L. Hall for the Orioles. I don't know if he's on the top one. Is he on the top 100? I can't look up all of these guys. Orioles, that goes to EA Sports. It's in the game.
Bruce is saying that Bruyo is saying that uh, Sheffield really jumped up on that list. Where was he before? I know people people like the uh, people like the Sheffield brothers. There's Pavin Smith for the Diamondbacks. That's one for Arthur. He was a he was a higher round pick last year. I think he's he's this year's pick, so I don't think we're gonna see guys like Hall or Smith on this year's list. There's not too many on this year's of the, from this year's draft class on this year's top 100 list. I think maybe some maybe like Royce Lewis's. Where is Royce Lewis? Yeah, Royce Lewis is like 24th. Already. Now we've got a 74 out of 99, PJ Conlin for the Metropolitans. That'll be for Karen and the Mets. Nice. Um, Smith was fourth overall. Now I think McKay was fourth overall, wasn't he? I don't know. It's hard. There's too too many numbers. There's like. Baseball America's top 100, there's top 10 prospects per organization, then there's the draft. How's anybody supposed to keep, I don't know how, how GMs keep track of all this, TJ. I mean, they I must be staff. They've got a lot of people. I think you're close, I think that's closer. No, Beck was sixth, um, and Pavin Smith is seventh. He was seventh overall. There's Keston Hiuda, that's nice. Two out of 10. Rory, check that out. Hiura was uh, number nine. Number nine on the, uh, in, in the draft. Oh, could we have just looked on the back? <laughs> no, see, these ones don't have those. The autographs don't have all that. The parallels do have the, or the information. So there you go, that's a nice start. Rory with the Hiuda. There's Aaron Judge, of course. All those cards still have value attached to it. This will be a reminder for me to do that. All right, next box. Well, there's not a lot of, unless I'm missing something, folks, I don't think there's a lot of free agent news happening, right, still? I think we're still uh, still light on free agent signings. This, everyone in, on like MLB Network is saying that this, to, this is a turning point this season, is a turning point on the way people are approaching contracts. I don't know if it's, I don't know if that's the case. I think it's more of, you know, guys like the Dodgers are looking to get under the luxury tax. And I think it's more um, people are just waiting to spend money on the free agent class uh, next year. I think that's really what it is. You know, and, and then you have to deal with Scott Boris. You have to deal, deal with him and him, he, him thinking like J.D. Martinez is worth like $200 million. $25 million a year, $30 million a year, something crazy like that. But it is kind of crazy considering uh, there's only like three like three weeks left until pitchers and catchers report, and Darvish is not even signed. Although I think the the Brewers offered him a contract, which I think is a great I think that's a great move for the Brewers. But yeah, not not a lot of other news happening here. Um, John Singleton receives a 100 game suspension for a third positive uh, test. Positive test for a, a PED. Brewers also making a play for Christian Yelich, apparently. That could, that could be interesting. All right, next box. We have Noah Syndergaard. Wow. 43 out of 50. Noah Syndergaard. That's a great one for Karen and the Mets. Oh, is he really? Yeah, poor, poor John, John Singleton. Third. It's 100 games. That's a, that's a long time. 
Matt Sig Sour or Matt Whiskey Sour going to the Yankees, Daniel Patera. The PED that Singleton was was dinged for um, is let me let me try to pronounce it. Here we go. Uh, Dehydrochloromethyltestosterone. Nailed it. We got Tristan Lutz for Rory. There you go. Pulled a nice Tristan Lutz for him in Bowman Draft. There's Francisco Mejia. And we got Dylan Cousins for the Phillies. That'll go to Mike Koontz with the Fightin' Phils. All right, nice box there. Next one. Uh, the, Aust uh, the, the Austin, I was gonna say the Austin Jackson signed the Giants. No, the Giants, strike that, reverse it. The Giants signed Austin Jackson. The Cubs re-sign Brian Dunsing. The Brewers acquire, nope, the Blue Jays acquire Randall Grichuk from the Cardinals for Dominic Leone and Connor Green. The Nationals sign Howie Kendrick. Pir Pirates extend uh, Felipe Rivero. The, the Mets sign Adrian Gonzalez. I saw that, I think that was like last week. And a pitch clock is likely, which I don't think is that bad, I think. We're not going to really notice it. Brewers are reportedly making a pitch for Christian Yelich. I think they also, what was their offer to Diamondback sign Antonio Bastardo? Diamondbacks sign Chris Medlin? I think the Brewers are pursuing, uh, yeah, are pursuing you Darvish, maybe with a five year deal. Or maybe it's the Cubs that offered Darvish the five-year deal. Something like that. Yeah, Bruyo Giants guy is excited about is excited about uh, the season. Hey, if guys like if Evan Longoria is healthy, you know, if Andrew McCutcheon plays a healthy corner outfield. I mean, due, due to injuries and whatever, I think the, the Giants really, really underperformed last year. Uh, their record did not reflect the talent on that squad. So it could be a kind of a scary, scary year. Because the Giants might be, might be really good. Their World Series odds like jumped from like 33 to 1 to like 18 to 1 or something like that within a like the span of a week. Cody Bellinger. Eloy Jimenez to 250 for the White Sox. There's Blake Rutherford for the Yankees. That'll go to Daniel Patera. Blake Rutherford. Eloy Jimenez goes to Tom Nichols for the White Sox. Nice purple parallel in DC, I believe, with our Dodgers. Some value in that Cody Bellinger rookie card. Uh, it is an even year as well for the uh, for the Giants. This is true. Although you, I think you guys skipped a year though, right? We got Ryan Healy to one fifty for the A's. That'll be for Scott. Oh, and Rudko saying the Jays signed Curtis Granderson to a one-year deal as well. Curtis Granderson is a good dude. For the Rangers, Christopher Cease. Cease. Rangers, Joe Cavanaugh with that one. Is that Ryan Healy number? No, it's not. There's Dansby Swanson. 
All right, next mini box. There's Kevin Merrill for the A's. For Scott, there you go, Scott. <laughs> no worries, big boys, 007. I have a, this is a one per case, by the way, so I'll randomize that separately. I have respect for the Giants. There you go, you got guys have this guy too. There's Anthony Rizzo. Nice Rizzo autograph popping out of here. Mary Lou with the Cubs. It's it's nicer when the Dodgers beat a good Giants team. You know, that's more satisfying than beating up on a weak Giants team like we had to do last year. You know what I mean? It's better for the division and the league if the Giants and the Dodgers are good. You know? When the Yankees and Red Sox are both good, that's like that's Sunday night baseball must see TV, right? It's it's good for it's, it's good for baseball. It's good for the rivalry. All right, next box. <laughs> yeah, dogs have to get over that hump. <laughs> Can't quite get there. Someday. I think the what the Dodgers need, Dave and everybody. I think what the Dodgers need is for a year where no one expects them, where no one expects them to go to the World Series. I I got a lot of friends who who are from Northern California, who are Giants fans. My cousins. Uh, who I'm really close to. They're Giants fans. I got to deal with this all the time. But I'll tell you that every year that the Giants have won the World Series, I'll guarantee you that there were pretty much zero expectations that they would win the World Series. You know, no one expected that. They're like, there's no way. We're not going to win the. We're not going to win the World Series. I was. I asked. I. I will ask them straight up. I was like, in your heart of hearts, tell me. When spring training rolled around that year, you know, was was like even making the World Series like even a thought in your head? And everyone says no. Of course not. I think the, I think the year they I think the year my Giants friends fan friends had the year they expected the World Series was the year they lost to the Angels I think in the early two thousands. All right, next box. So see Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is your number three overall prospect right there, Blue Jays. That goes to DC. Nope, sorry, that goes to Mary Lou and the Blue Jays. There's Evan White for the Mariners. That'll be for Big Boys 007. There's Bellinger. I don't know if your Dodger fan friends, Dave, can lay it on that thick. You know, it's not like we won anything. <laughs> we won the National League. And there's Jason Groom for the Red Sox. Nice. That'll go to Mary Lou. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think we see we've seen TJ too many Evan White autographs pop out of here. Of all, of all the cases that we've done, I think we're seeing some some new faces in this particular case, folks. We do have one more case remaining. We were able to secure two cases for you. So if you want to get involved, if you missed out on this case, you want to get involved on the second case. Uh, it's available right now on jazbeeshobbyland.com. Your team might still be there. Pirates, uh, Pirates edition, 77 out of 99, McCutcheon. That'll go to Jason and the Pirates. Cole Reagans for the Rangers. That'll go to Joe Cavanaugh and the Rangers. Uh, Dave saying that, oh, <laughs> your friends will still talk crap even if they win one more game than the Giants. Oh, that's true. 
There's Paul Goldschmidt at a 250 for Arthur. He's looking for ink for Paul Goldschmidt. There's Tanner Hawk for the Red Sox. Another Red Sox for Mary Lou. Bruyo's pretty pumped. Bruce is pretty pumped about Kutch. Yeah, he is going to be good for the clubhouse. Well, it remains to be seen, you know, if if he can uh, continue. I guess last season was okay, but he, his production is. It's not. He's not. He's not an MVP guy anymore, but. I mean, what? I think he still he still hit like what twenty eight home runs last year. I guess the defense is sort of the issue. You'll probably play him in the corner. He's not playing center, right? Um, but it's still kind of a big, big outfield out there. I mean, it listen. If if Evan Longoria is healthy, I mean, because third base is a black hole, you know, um, for the Giants. You know, they were desperate enough to bring back Pablo Sandoval. Third, third base is a black hole out there, but Evan Longoria is great. He's solid. You know. And, uh, and and if Andrew McCutcheon is healthy, if I mean both of those guys are a little bit are older, but if they if, if they're healthy, they could they could put together some solid veteran seasons. Giants are gonna be. Giants are gonna be a scary, uh, a scary team if they're all healthy, you know. And listen, guys like Jeff Samarja may be getting overpaid, but he can still put together, you know. Forget about the money; he can still put together a good season. So can Johnny Cueto. Mark Melanson was injured for most part, so I mean that screwed up the bullpen situation. <laughs> Are you guys still waiting for Brandon Belt to be like a a twenty five home run guy, a thirty home run guy? I think I, I think people have always waited for that Brandon Belt shoe to drop. Like he's gonna suddenly be a great corner hitter, but I don't know if that's gonna worked out. Out of one fifty, Blake Rutherford for Tom Nichols, and the next autograph is Roniel Raudis, Boston Red Sox. Going bananas here. That goes to Mary Lou. There's Eloy Jimenez out of 99 for the White Sox. And we've got a John Duplantier for Arthur and the uh, Diamondbacks. Arthur, well, how do you feel about your Diamondbacks this year? Oh, there's more info on him. He gets an A minus from Baseball America. And what's with, yeah, I feel like more pitchers are getting blisters these days. Is it the, uh, I feel like it's something to do with the, the construction of the baseballs, which is a big issue. Raking rookies, Cody Mellinger, hopefully no sophomore slump for him. And Jeter Downs for the Reds. Scott is down with the Reds. Jeter Downs coming your way. Doesn't doesn't Brandon Bell have like concussion issues? I feel like he lands ends up with a concussion every once in a while. Look at that. Nice. I believe these are case hits too. Dustin Fowler. Nice Dustin Fowler for the Yankees. Daniel Patera. There you go. That's out of one twenty five. That Yankees lineup. Build that lineup out. It's pretty scary. Anderson Espinoza. That goes to Lee and uh, Lee Cheeseman and the Friars. There you go, Padres. 
he gets hit all the time because <laughs> Big Boys 007 gets hit. He's saying that Brandon Belt gets hit all the time because because <laughs> of the giraffe neck. Don't people call him Jeffrey? I think that's the nickname, right, for Brandon Belt. There's Miggy, the 250, because he kind of looks like Jeffrey from Toys R Us, the Toys R Us draft. <laughs> I've heard that somewhere, but I guess, yeah, maybe the long neck as well will do it. All right, there's Raking Rookies, the atomic refractor version of Cody Bellinger for DC and the Dodgers. Dodgers doing no business in the offseason. Their business is getting under that luxury tax threshold and so they've accomplished that and I think that's going to be it for them. They're going to count on the young guys coming up the ranks to to develop, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, baby giraffe they call him, right? Brandon Belt? It's pretty funny. More boxes to go. This one and then two more. Four autographs each. We've got 12 autographs to go. Four per box, so keep an eye out for that. Yeah, <laughs> Brandon Belt turns 30. You better break out soon, Dave says. Yeah, I always feel like this is also like, like fancy baseball talking as well. We're always thinking like, oh yeah, you know, like this year's the year. This year's the year where where Brandon Belt is gonna he, hit um, like 25 home runs, right? He's gonna realize his potential. He's gonna hit 280, hit 25 home runs, 90 RBIs. You know, he's gonna hit like 40 doubles. You know, in a season, and it's gonna be great. But just never quite, never quite gets there. All right, next box. And the auto is another PJ Conlin for Karen and the Mets. Well, with with Jock jo Peterson, issue with him is that his, his swing is kind of all over the place. It's like a constant work in progress mechanics-wise from what I'm hearing. There's Mackenzie Gore. Nice Mackenzie Gore autograph for the Padres. Lee Cheeseman with the Padres. Mackenzie Gore is like your third overall pick. Yeah, your third overall pick from uh, Whiteville High School. 51 out of 99. Whiteville High School in North Carolina. Another Paven Smith for Arthur and the Diamondbacks. <laughs> Rich saying Peterson's making straps now. I see what you did there. He actually, uh, he actually is, uh, avoided arbitration is making a, a decent salary this year. He's also currently at a, uh, no, not anymore, but he was at a Pasadena dog park for a little Dodger event. Nate Pearson for the Blue Jays. That goes to Mary Lou. Um, the Dodgers Fan Fest is this Saturday. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make that. I think tickets sold out like in a heartbeat, too. There's Jake Lamb for Arthur and the Diamondbacks. Sup, Max? Um, and Gliber Torres, who is your Baseball America's like top six prospect. All right, two boxes to go.
Speaking of Mackenzie Gore, people, uh, I think Peter Gannon's on the MLB network was saying, I think in, a, in, a, in about a year or so, there's going to be a lot of talk about the Padres and their organization coming up the ranks. Because they, they have a lot of youngsters coming up the ranks. They actually moved, one of their youngsters I think was Solarte, Yangari Solarte, maybe he wasn't that young, but he got moved to the Blue Jays. But um, they still have guys like Manny Margot, Manuel Margot, who came over from the Red Sox organization. And he's still pretty young. I think he's only like turning 22 or 23 this season. And he, I, I don't think he's quite filled filled out into what kind of player he's supposed to be. Like there are people saying, hey, he's got this guy has 30 steal potential. And some other guys are saying, ah, he's got 30 home run potential. Some people are saying he's got 20-20 potential. You know, some people are like, yeah, he's, he's a top of the order guy. Some other people are like, nah, he's a middle of the order guy. I think it remains to be seen what Manuel Margot can become in San Diego. The good thing is for him is that he's going to get the playing time. He'll be able to play. There's no one blocking his path. You know, the Padres aren't going to sign like some big free agent that's going to get in his way. Anything like that. So, so good for him. So we'll keep an eye out for him. Sleeper pick for your fantasy baseball teams. Drew Ellis for the Diamondbacks. Is this everybody, Arthur? I think these are all the Diamondbacks autos on the checklist. I think you got them. At least for the rookies, anyway. Or the prospects, prospect autos. There's Clark Schmidt, 21 out of 50. For the Yankees, that'll go to Daniel Patera and the Bronx Bombers. And we've got Ryan Mountcastle. Eric with the Orioles. Is Mountcastle on the top 100? I think he was drafted a couple of years ago. He might be there. He is. Ryan Mountcastle is uh, on the Baseball America top 100. Ryan Mountcastle lands at 71. Um, and they, they list him as the third baseman. There you go. Fan graph saying he's got a pretty swing. Hitter's timing, bat control, blah, 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 blah. So this is pretty much your Manny Machado replacement. So hold on to your Mount Castles. There's Clark Schmidt autograph for uh, the, for the Yankees. There you go, Daniel. And another Evan White for the Mariners. That'll head out to Big Boys 007 with the Mariners. This is your second one, Dave. Starting your Evan White PC. There you have it. You see on the top 100? Evan White not on the top 100. All right, final box. Good luck, everybody. And I see a lot of orders coming in. I'm not sure what they are for, but we will check all these orders uh, after this. I think a lot of them are for a lot of them are for the last case of Bowman's best, which is already down to 17 teams left. We can do another case. We can go back to back on this case. So get into it, folks. There you go. <laughs> Dave's like, he's got big boys all of a sudden. He's like, I got six of those Evan Whites. Hopefully he ends up being good one day. Oh. 
He's a, on the scouting scale, he's a 70 defender. On the 20 to 80 scouting scale, he's a 70 defender. Has the hands to scoop balls out of the dirt, an excellent flexibility, and has a long track record of hitting. He projects as an above average or even plus hitter. That sounds like that sounds like James Loney to me. Great defender. You know, a regular 290, 300 hitter maybe. So, I don't know. If you have a good glove, that'll, that'll get you into the majors early. I don't know what the Mariners are doing, you know, or where, the, where, where they're at in their progression. But I'm sure the, I don't know who's, who, who's at first. The Mariners. I'm sure they. I'm sure they can squeeze Evan White in there. All right. Good luck, folks. Last box. Raking rookies. Cody Bellinger. This time out of fifty. Nice, 12 out of 50 for the Dodgers. And Mitchell White for the Dodgers. He's, in, he's on this list, I'm pretty sure. Don with the Dodgers. Yeah, Mitchell White is number 69 on the Baseball America Top 100. I think he may be like another year or two out. Might be close. I think people people are suggesting that. So if if Walker Bueller, if Walker Bueller is projected as a frontline rotation guy, there's a nice Cody Bellinger. If Walker Bueller is a frontline rotation guy, apparently Mitchell White could be like a really solid like, you know, number two or three starter. Three, you know, one of those guys. But has good stuff. Should be in the majors somewhat soon. David Peterson for the Metropolitans. That'll go to Karen. There's Kenley Jansen. Nice. One, two, three out of 150. Uh, Mango is asking Do we think flawless baseball will fill tonight? Yes, I do. So. Go grab your teams. Uh, there is a redemption here. DC, Don was like, let's see a redemption. There it is. And that, that lineup in, in New York, that's going to be insane. <laughs> Don's like, if Mitchell White turns out to be Clayton Kershaw... There's Jose De Leon, a former Dodger prospect, at a 250 that goes to the Rays. That'll be for DC. There's another Jeter Downs for the Reds, for Scott. Any guesses on this redemption? Mango is guessing probably Bryce Harper. Probably this guy, which would make, which would make a uh, super Pilar very happy, which would make Jackie very happy. DC is guessing Ian Happ. It's the last card of the break. No one wants to guess. Speak now or forever hold your peace. Oh, I do have randomizers to do. All right, Will Myers, tell us who's, be, who's behind that card. You are due to receive a 1997 Best Cuts autograph of A. If there's another A there, that's going to make uh, Daniel Patera very happy. If there's an N there, 
That could be that could make uh, Mary Lou very happy. It's an N. If there's a D, R, E, and W, and maybe a B, and an Andrew Benintendi for Mary Lou and the Boston Red Sox. 1997 Best Cuts Autograph. I don't know if I have an example close to me, but that's a nice insert autograph there, Mary Lou. I didn't expect a redemption to be here. I can't grab those pens that are out there. All right, for the Red Sox, Andrew Benintendo. Nintendo. It's a cereal. Wow. Anybody remember those uh, Nintendo cereal? Mario Brothers on one side and then uh, Zelda on the other side of that super sugary cereal box. All right. Let's go here. Let's grab some dice. Let's get a couple lists going. We've got left, right. For the mirror image one, then the atomic refractor is a uh, is a one per case. So we'll we'll do, we'll do that separately. Cubs and Rays. <laughs> Did you love that cereal, Bruce? Yeah. If you're a kid, look it up on the YouTube. It's pretty amazing. Classic '80s uh, cereal, which I don't I don't think my parents ever bought that for me. I don't remember it anyway. I'm sure I beg for that cereal. Three and two, five times. Left, right, one, two, three, four, and five. So we'll go to the left side. So all the left side cards, or left side teams, the Kluber side, we'll get those. This, Cubs and Rays, Rizzo and McKay, three and two. One, two, three, four, and five. Cubs on top. That goes to Mary Lou and the Cubbies. All right. There you go. There you go, Mary Lou. Oh, man. bruyo has got all sorts of information on that cereal. There were Zelda sword marshmallows. <laughs> He's like, I'm, I'm kind of dating myself now. All right, folks. That was a great break of uh, Bowman's Best number 15 from jazbeeshobbyland.com. Right there, we have the next case. So check it out, and we will see you next time. Thanks for all the fun, folks. Bye.